It's been talked about whether or not there is a connection here uh, with uh, the expansion of the internet and what's uh, going on. Well, here joining us now is uh, an expert on that, uh, Pat Truman, CEO of Morality and Media and the founder of PornHarms.com. Now, Pat, uh, you worked for the Justice Department. You have an extensive background on this particular issue. In fact, uh, you used to work here at the Family Research Council and was involved. Uh, in a number of the issues trying to protect kids. Thanks for being here today. Good to have, uh, good to be here, Tony. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's, uh, there's some of the questions coming in now, and I want to uh, start off by one of those questions is, is the Department of Justice doing anything to, uh, to stop this? Well, the Department of Justice is doing some things to stop sexual trafficking, but they're really working on sort of the end game of sexual trafficking. While they're doing that, and I, I, I can't compliment them on it, because I've seen how it's done. I've been involved with... You've actually been out on, 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 on sting operations on the street with uh, some of these... Yes, with law enforcement. Yeah. As, on, a con, on a government contract, I trained uh, a lot of law enforcement on the issue of sex trafficking. But at the same time the Justice Department is working on sex trafficking, they've shut down their effort against pornography. So they've given a green light to all the pornographers. Now, you have to look, Tony, at at the demand side of trafficking. Yeah, is there a link between the two? Yes, there is a link, uh, Tony, because the, the, uh, when a man uh, is going to go to a prostitute, whether that's a traffic victim or not, goes to a prostitute, that's a taboo in society. I mean, men don't, uh, you know, introduce themselves on the metro and whatnot, start talking about prostitutes they visit. That's a taboo. What is it that breaks down the inhibitions in a man to be willing to go to a prostitute, even if he's married, even if he's uh, engaged? And one thing that does that is steady consumption of pornography. That's one thing we Desensitizes know. them to, to that stigma? That's right. And to any sexual activity. If, you, if a man is going to consume pornography, you know the Bible says that looking at a woman with lust is the same as adultery. If a man is going to look at pornography, he's going to commit adultery. And if he's going to commit adultery, it's a small step to go visit a prostitute. And most men who are visiting prostitutes, they don't care whether it's a traffic victim or not because their inner core, their moral core, their uh, inhibitions are gone. So, so let's put that in context. We've seen this in the last 15 to 20 years, a rapid expansion of online pornography and obscenity. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, I've not seen very much come out of the Department of Justice uh, in, in recent years, even in the last administration That's that right. aggressively pursued that. So that would say that the, the demand side of consuming that uh, material online is growing. That's right. And if we don't handle the demand side. If we don't say to people that you can't have a steady diet of hardcore, which is illegal, pornography on the internet, on cable and satellite, etc. If we're not willing to take that step, we're really giving these young men growing up today the training manual on how they're going to treat women. And today, Tony, pornography, I mean, it's always been terrible, but today it's violent. Uh, scenes of uh, just any kind of uh, uh, variety so that this is the training manual for the young men growing up starting 8, 9, 10, 11 years of age what they see on the internet. We can't expect those people when they get to college to avoid prostitution or to avoid trafficking victims in prostitution. They have tr been trained in such a way that their sexual inhibitions are non-existent. But, but Pat, we're told that you know on the internet watching, looking at pornography, that's, that's a harmless crime. There's, That's there's, no vic there's no victim there. Well, let me point out, even uh, today you can go on the Internet to some websites, pick out uh, a, a girl or a woman that's on that website, and you can buy time with that individual. She'll perform acts of prostitution for you, and it's all filmed. Now, that, uh, th those websites, some of them, are in countries where these are trafficked victims. There may even be trafficked victims in this country. So the porn industry has figured out how with traffic victims to have the consumer pay for the pornography that he's watching. Then that tape is kept and others can rent that tape. So the, the porn, pornography and sex trafficking in that way 
are married one to the other. Any signs that uh, the Justice Department is going to get serious about uh, this illegal obscenity? And Tony, uh, about a year ago, Family Research Council and 70 other national and state groups joined together in the war on illegal pornography. It's an effort to get our federal laws enforced because in the Obama administration, they haven't been enforced at all. What we're doing is right now getting Congress to uh, put their name on a letter that's circulating both the House and the Senate. It's a letter to the Attorney General saying pornography is causing great harm. Please enforce the already existing obscenity laws. That's taking place. There's several other moves on Capitol Hill, and good people are uh, getting involved on Capitol Hill. Some of your new congressmen, mm -hmm. some of them have been there a while. Uh, just so people understand really what's at stake here, this is big business, isn't it? Well, the pornography industry is a 12 or $13 billion industry. Some say it's much higher. That's what it is in the United States. And they States. play dirty. Oh, yes. They play dirty. And when we were prosecuting at the Justice Department, they used to tell us that the ones we prosecuted, that there's enough money going, as much money going under the table as there is above the table. And uh, so this is an industry that's, you know, it's, some of it's organized crime, some of it's uh, involved in some of these, in money laundering, uh, trafficking, et cetera, et cetera. Well, Pat, thanks so much for uh, your dedication to this issue. It's one you've been on for quite some time, and uh, we're glad to be able to work with you. Thanks, Tom.